Hey, what's up guys? Today I'll be doing a review on this Last Stand Face Saver headgear. So stay tuned. Hey, what's up guys? Carlo here and today I'm doing a review on this Last Stand Face Saver headgear. I got mine in the metallic or red color scheme. You can also get it in metallic blue, gold, as well as black. So four different colors to choose from. Three different sizes, small, medium, or large. I got mine in large just based on my head size and dimensions, obviously. Um, this is a Velcro strap closure on the back. So obviously that's going to be the adjustability uh, for the side or the circumference of your head. And then you also have a lace-up closure for the crown of your head and a Velcro chin strap at the bottom that just uses Velcro uh, to close that off. Now, Last Stand is a company based out of China. They're a Chinese company, and obviously the gear themselves is made in China um, that makes boxing gloves and other boxing equipment, including this face saver headgear. I was browsing online one day, and I was just looking for new equipment to try out, and specifically headgear, and I ended up finding this Last Stand one on Amazon for $39 plus free shipping. So that would place this as by far the most affordable, the cheapest face saver I've tried to date. And as well as I noticed that this face saver is pretty clear that they copied the Kleto Reyes face saver with the design of the headgear by, based on just the shape, the lace-up closure, and even the rear Velcro closure. They, I'm pretty sure they used the Reyes as the template to make this headgear. So with that being said, at $39, it, it being made in China, uh, for it being as cheap as it was, I honestly thought it would suck. Like my expectations wasn't really high at all, but I said, screw it all. Let me try it out and see uh, if it is worth it to get. And to be honest with you, I was really surprised with this headgear uh, when I got it. Not so much with the construction, because there's definitely some flaws there, but when I put it on, uh, it was super comfortable. It has pretty good vision, um, and it definitely surpassed what I thought was going to be a terrible head face saver headgear and is actually one of the better ones I've tried, especially at $39. I don't think you're gonna get anything cheaper than that, uh, especially for a face saver. So just to show you guys design-wise, I got mine in a size large, but um, if you've seen the Reyes headgear before, then this looks just like it. It's almost very, it's also very similar to the rival Mexican style headgear. Now this is a very light headgear. And one thing I wanted to mention is actually lighter than the winning FG5000, which comes in at about 15 ounces. So this one actually came in, I put it on the scale, and this one came in at 14 ounces, so this thing is super light. And obviously, a lot has to do with the padding, but mostly with the exterior, uh, which is going to be a, a fake, a, like a polyurethane they use. They don't use genuine leather. Obviously, they cut down on weight, as well as make it a little bit more affordable. But you can see it says Last Stand since 2017, so they're a relatively new company. I mean, the actual font and writing is a little crooked. Um, it's kind of cheap, obviously, but you kind of get what you pay for. The one other thing you'll notice uh, with the front bar right here is the stitching in the middle is... Off, off center so it's not in the center again it's just more of an aesthetic the stitching is, is pretty solid throughout I mean I didn't find any issues with areas of the stitching coming out the actual frame of this is going to be I believe it's plastic it's not an actual aluminum frame where you can bend it or, or kind of you know bend it to certain pressure points I'm sure maybe you can bend it to a certain degree but it's not like a metal frame that some headgears or face savers have to where you can actually you know, compress or pull it out to kind of reduce any kind of pressure point you might have on your temple or your cheekbone or on your chin or even on the back of your head. Um, but so I think this frame in here is made out of plastic. And again, it uses a synthetic material. Like the Reyes, it has this, the laces that kind of come underneath that kind of stitch the bottom sections together. You can see there how they use that as well as on the crown of the headgear. You can see it also has these loops that keeps the little laces you know, the laces going through the crown of the headgear. Laces are pretty cheap um, and thin, but again, that's not a huge deal because again, you're trying to save weight. So you can see they're thinner laces right there. The bottom has, uh, or should I say the bottom part of where the neck line is at, you have this black piping that comes through there. The inner liner is the same exact material throughout the entire headgear, which is the same polyurethane material. The chin strap uh, is also an area that I feel like it can be improved. You can see that it has kind of like a double velcro system on here which is i'll show you how that works when it when i put it on but it kind of just goes through this little uh open end right there and you can see the stitching again is probably not the best 
Um, some of the material is also kind of showing right here and some of the foam is, is popping out. So again, quality is not the, not the greatest, um, but at $39, I, you know, my hopes wasn't very high to begin with. So it is what it is, but you can see the stitching has been, hasn't been done very well there. Um, you actually have pretty good sized foam do uh, ear donuts. These are about an inch and they have good density to them. You also have this little bar that goes across that just really nothing. That's just more, more or less the same as the same material they used for the top lace closure. They just use that to cross over the ears, but the actual depth of it's pretty good. And the ergonomics, my ears actually line up with the holes, which is always a, always a plus. You also have that tapered cut out neck on the back to allow your, your neck to have flexibility. And then you also have the Velcro straps uh, on the back of the head as well that uses this little lace system with the nylon. And you have this uh, piece of rubber that kind of goes over it. So it, it makes it easier to kind of pull on the strap. Um, I pre-adjust mine before I put it on that way. The only thing I have to adjust when I put this headgear on is a chin strap. So the sizing for the crown and the back has already been adjusted to my size head. Um, but that's it really. I mean, you can see the material on the inside is the same. Um, I'll tell you the issue I had with that. The padding now, there's not much padding, if any, really on the side of the head. You can see it has a really soft style padding, maybe an eighth of an inch on the side of the head. The main padding is gonna be the ear donut. The front padding on the nose bar, obviously on the side of the head, as well as on the forehead, uh, has a, again, a medium to soft density to it, which is nice as far as comfort goes. When I put this on, it's a very comfortable headgear. So let me go ahead and slide this on and show you guys the fit on it. Okay, so sliding onto my head, the first thing I noticed when I put this on is I didn't have any pressure points. Some headgears, like I, I did the Everlast, I think it was a Safe Max headgear. <laughs> When I put the head on, I took some adjustment. There was initial feeling of like pressure on my temple, on my cheeks. With this one, I didn't get that really at all. And you, you can see that the, the way that the headgear sits, the, the nose kind of sits at an upward, the nose bar sits kind of at an upward angle. And you can actually see the stitching is off as well as the logo, but whatever. That's just, again, more of the aesthetics. Um, so if you do take a hit straight on, what happens is this, the bar kind of, bends downwards and then goes over your nose. So I've never actually gotten hit in the nose with this bar, which is a good thing. When I do take a shot straight on, you can see that it actually comes underneath my nose and I got a pretty big nose. So the fact that it didn't hit my nose and when I got hit with it, it just kind of tucks underneath is a good thing. So it does have a really good angle of which the nose bar sits at. So again, it sits more at kind of a little bit at like a 10 to 20 degree angle upwards. Um, so when you do take a hit straight on, it just doesn't go jammed right in it and you're going right, you know, jammed right into your nose. Uh, visibility is pretty good. Uh, I can see, you know, left and right. My horizontal vision is good. Obviously the lower vision down here is not the best. And that goes for any face saver, especially for uppercuts or shots that are coming from upwards, you know, downwards to up. So that's going to be something that you're going to have to deal with any kind of face saver. But my, my side peripheral vision and my top vision is good. Um, the other issue is this material. So when I started sweating a lot, I noticed that I had to adjust this headgear quite a bit because I would get hit with a shot and it would kind of do one of those. So now my vision is kind of blocked. And if you're in the middle of getting hit with like a combination, you know, you really can't see it. So you're kind of like trying to push it back up so you can see the shots coming in. So I wish they would put like a suede liner material rather than using the same outside polyurethane, you know, synthetic um, material that they use out here, they would use like a suede like Rival does. That way, maybe it soaks up a little bit more sweat and you have to dry it out a little bit more. But I would rather take that trade off of not having it slip around while I'm, I'm in the middle of sparring. So you can see the crown looks good. The ear donuts are actually in perfect spot. You know, sometimes you find headgear where you get it and it's like your ears are too far forward or too far back and it just doesn't line up. But it lines up pretty well on, on my right side. My left side is lined up really nicely. Um, and now the chin strap. So the chin strap, the way it works is pretty standard. Um, this is a little piece right here. This slides right through. And then you kind of have to open this piece right here. Because when you open it, you got to pull down to torque it down. And then this other part right here kind of lays down in between. You almost sandwich it through. And then lastly is the, the chin strap itself. It kind of goes on there so it's kind of sloppy i mean i don't i wish they had like a buckle system or at least like a quick clip it would have made it so much better than this this cheap velcro strap the good thing is it doesn't go on your adam's apple or right on your throat it goes right on your chin where it needs to be hence the name chin strap um so i definitely like the location i feel like they did a really great job of 
making sure that everything needs to be where it needs to be. You know, the ears are in a good spot, you have good vision, the nose is in, the nose bar doesn't jam right into your nose when you take a straight on shot. The chin strap's not all the way down here choking you out. So the ergonomics are surprisingly good. So go to the back of the head, you can see, again, I have this already adjusted, but I can make it tighter if I want to by just kind of pulling on it, tightening that down. You have that strap. You also have this one right here. You can tighten down. And there you have it. I mean, that's, that's it. The other, I guess I wouldn't even call it a drawback, but I wish the other option they had was other colors that weren't metallic. I'm not a huge fan of like bright red or bright blue or gold, especially for headgear. I'm more of like just straight up black or blue. I mean, they have black, but it's more of a shiny black. So I wish they had a little bit more subdued, just flat leather colors rather than just all metallic colors. And maybe they will later down the road. Um, but definitely, I think this headgear for $39 is going to be really hard to beat. You know, all things considered, yeah, I know that the quality isn't the best, but you'll be surprised um, if you get this headgear and you put it on, you'll probably say to yourself like, damn, this is actually a pretty nice face saver for $39 and it, and it actually weighs less than the FG5000 weight wise. Um, so probably as far as a face saver goes, probably the best bang the buck face saver I've used to date. Um, at $39 with free shipping, you can get on Amazon. I think Last Stand also has a website you could check out. Um, but I'll make sure to put everything in uh, everything in the description box all the links to where I purchased this one But definitely if you're looking for a budget face saver or if you're not if you're looking for a face saver in general And uh, you want something comfortable. This is definitely one of the best ones I've, I've used so far You know, obviously quality control wise needs to improve but outside of that ergonomics are good They're really comfortable it slips around a little bit. So maybe they can improve the liner uh, But outside of that, it's a, it's a really nice head gear. So if you guys have any questions or comments, as usual, put them down below. I'll put the link in the description box where you can find this headgear, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.